Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie and I am an almost second year PhD student in chemical engineering at Montana State University. And today I'm bringing you some tips for undergrad researchers, specifically some do's and don'ts of being an undergrad researcher or even just being in your first research position, um, more specifically like in an academic setting. And let's go ahead and get into it. And my first do is to ask so many questions. Ask a lot of questions about like, why things are done the way that they are, um, how things are done sometimes, what something is, what this piece of equipment is, stuff like that. Ask those questions for sure. And maybe keep a little like notepad around with you or something or in your lab notebook, which you should have. Write down all the answers that you want, uh, especially if they're things that are like kind of nitty gritty that you might not remember otherwise. Ask those questions and write down the answers. One thing that I don't want you to do is to expect to be told everything. Um, it is research. You're learning how to be a researcher. You're expected to be a researcher, which means you should know how to Google things. Specifically, like if you're asking questions about like, what is DNA sequencing? Like chances are you'll get like a quick answer or something from the person you're working with, your PI, whoever. However, it's not on them to teach you every single thing about it and what it is how it was discovered, everything like that. You should know how to use Google in order to look up like articles that would explain it to you or videos or anything like that. Google, YouTube, all of those are just as much as your friend during your research position as they are like during a normal class when you're like researching, how do I take a third derivative? Like that's the same as it would be for how can I make auger plates or something like that? Or what is a biosafety cabinet? things of that nature. While it's important to ask questions, it's not up to the people around you to be your personal search engine. You need to take the initiative to do some of your own outside research and not just be this question box. Like you need to also know how to answer your own questions. And that's just a really important thing in general in research and in life. The next do is to be flexible in your scheduling, especially if you're an undergraduate working for one specific grad student, like that's the person that you're in the lab to help out. It's good to be flexible in your scheduling just so that you and the person you're working for can come to an agreement on like times that you need to be in the lab, specific times and days to run certain experiments. It's important to be flexible because they're helping you out by giving you the opportunity to be researching, but you're also helping them out, which comes to my don't, which is don't bend over backwards and totally mess up your own schedule just in order to work with whoever you're working with in the lab. If you have to completely ignore your own needs and your own schedule in order to work in that lab, it's probably not a really good fit for you. And in the long run, it's not going to be healthy for you. So it's really important to come to like a partnership with, especially if you're working with one specific grad student, it is a partnership. And um, you, while you are helping them out, they're also helping you out. And it's just important to be in communication and then especially about the scheduling because it can be really, really hard to work in a lab. And a lot of times grad students and undergrads have different ideas in mind about like what the expectations are and what the scheduling is gonna be. So in general, just be really open with communication but don't completely flip your life upside down just to try and work in that lab. It's probably not the best fit if that's something that you're having to do. My next do is to do your best to be present for a lot of different types of experiments and any sort of different equipment that people around you are scheduling time on. Um, when I was in my first undergraduate lab, I did my dang best to try and sit on different microscopes with people when they were on the microscope. And while I wasn't using the equipment, they were able to tell me a little bit about it and I could just see what the equipment would do to see if it's something that would maybe help me out with my own research. Also just being present for different experiments and different techniques will broaden your own skill set, even if it's not something that you're actively taking part in. If you watch a few times, maybe then you'll be able to get trained on something and then be able to help out yourself in the future. And you can add that skill list to your repertoire. And it also just kind of shows you a bunch of different ways that research happens and might open up your eyes to some different avenues of research that you might be more interested in than what you're currently doing. Um, I don't think it's fair to expect to be trained on every single type of equipment and to do every type of experiment. 
it can be really expensive to get training on certain pieces of equipment. I know like with the FEM that I got trained on earlier this summer, the short course for the training was $500. And then to sit on the scope itself is $70 an hour. And so it's really un it's not feasible at all to have an undergraduate who's only gonna be using that scope for maybe a year to go through that training and that cost. Whereas since I will be in my PhD for who knows how much longer, maybe four or five more years, the, the cost benefit is much greater. Like the cost that we put in to get myself trained, we're gonna get a lot more use out of that training than if I had only been around for like a year or so. So don't expect to be trained on a lot of things because it can take quite a lot of time and it can also be quite expensive. The thing about undergraduate researchers is a lot of times they're only in labs for maybe a semester to a year at a time. If you're in a lab for more than like a couple of years as an undergrad, that's really awesome. And it's very likely then that you'll get trained on a lot more things because the amount of time that it takes to really train someone well enough where you can trust them to work by themselves, especially on this really expensive equipment, that takes a lot of time. So when you're an undergrad researcher and you're only around for like a semester, maybe a year, that's not really time that's well spent when you could be, um, your talents and skills can be used for more simple things that are like more time consuming and kind of just tedious and monotonous for a grad student to do, if that makes sense. Coming to my next do, do help with the dirty work, the dishes, the cleaning, the doing the waste runs, that kind of stuff, labeling things, aliquoting, these kind of more monotonous tasks. That is a massive, massive part of research and that is a massive part of being an undergrad. Specifically because, like I said, with that whole training portion of being an undergrad, the time it takes to train and everything and then the time it takes to build trust with your grad student or whoever you're working with in the lab it's quite possible that you won't be doing any like super big complicated experiments and data collection but even just doing these more rudimentary things that seem like they're not that important are very important pouring auger plates the experiment cannot happen if our auger plates aren't there helping with dilutions and plating and stuff like that. That's most of honestly what I do in the lab for my research is like dilutions and plating. And that's something that I would trust an undergrad with and things like that. So expect to do kind of the more like monotonous, dirty work, the kind of chores that maybe no one wants to do. But those are the things that really keep the lab running. I do want to make that clear, but don't let yourself be treated like a maid. I think you need to advocate for yourself in order to be in like considered and involved in experiments because you are there to do research especially it, i guess it kind of depends on what like the job posting was into the job description because some labs do just hire undergrads specifically to wash dishes clean prepare standards stuff like that um but a lot of times undergrads are supposed to be like research interns and undergrad researchers so if that is something that's in your job title and your job description while you're doing this more like kind of grunt work type stuff, make sure that you're still taking part in experiments and that you're able to help out on actual data collection days and stuff like that because that's also what you're there for. So do be your own advocate and don't let yourself be treated like a maid. Um, I also think it's good to offer to help on other projects. So do your best to talk with other people in the lab, other people in the research center, however it works, to see what other people you can maybe help out a little bit, what other things you might be able to learn. The way that lab settings often work is that you have a couple different people in the lab who have these different specialties. And so you need to do your best to talk to the other people in the lab so that you can, again, broaden what you know about research, what you're learning in the lab, and also just Kind of get a little bit more hours in if you're trying to get some extra money depending if you're in a paid position hopefully you are i don't really believe in non-paid lab positions um non-paid positions at all but yeah do your best to offer to help with other experiments in the lab offer to help the other students in the lab ask if you can see them do their experiments and lab and equipment stuff do your best to just talk to a lot of people in the lab and kind of network your way through a bunch of experiments. However, do not expect to be published on everything that you help with. Um, this is something that is kind of known in the research world is like there'll be people who go around and just do their best to make like 
just be part of a bunch of different projects in very small ways so that they can do their best to get their names on a bunch of different manuscripts and get published a bunch which is so annoying <laughs> luckily that's not something that i've personally experienced however i've heard of it and i just cannot imagine how frustrating that would be so while you're doing probably a lot to help with research it might just be that you end up in like the acknowledgement section of a paper if you're doing a lot of work but don't expect to be an author um, and yeah, just don't expect to necessarily be an author. If it's something that you really feel like you made a lot of contributions to a project and you feel like you should be an author on the paper, maybe talk to the PI of the paper in the lab and see about that because there are times I think that undergrads can sometimes get taken advantage of and make their grad students look really, really good even though it's the undergrad doing a lot of the work. And But there are also some times that people feel the need to be acknowledged when it's maybe not that necessary past maybe an acknowledgement in the acknowledgement section rather than a author title thing anyway that's that on that um, and then my last do is to ask for help for applying for other research positions and other jobs ask for help with scholarship applications and letters of recommendation and grants and everything like that the whole point of being an undergraduate researcher is to see if you enjoy research, to see if you want to maybe go to grad school or if you're interested in a career in research. That's kind of the whole point. And so use the time and the opportunity to its fullest extent. Be sure that you network with people in your lab, network with the labs next to you, attend events, attend seminars, lectures, trainings anything that you can in order to form this little network, see what you're interested in, see if you can get people to write letters of rec for you. Your PI and your grad student should be more than help, more than happy to help you with these applications and that's what they're there for as well. That's what your PI is there for, for your, the grad student you're working for and they should, and the latter continues. So definitely do your best to treat it as a networking type role. That's kind of what every job is, isn't it? Um, and don't be afraid to ask for those things. Don't be intimidated. Don't feel like your PI and your grad student don't have time for you for that because they're there to help you succeed and they're there to help you basically move on to bigger and better things. That's the whole point. Um, so make sure that you are taking that opportunity and you're advocating for yourself and you're asking these questions and asking for these favors, even though they're not favors. Your PI should be more than more than happy to help you get a sick job and like get that awesome scholarship and stuff like that. So these are just some basic overall do's and don'ts and these can apply to pretty much any sort of undergraduate research positions. I might do one more specifically aimed towards microbiology and just like general microbiology lab tips. We'll see, that might be a little bit too specific. But anyway, leave your best do's and don'ts down below for undergrad researchers, either from the point of a grad student or an undergrad. Um, I think it would be good to know. And also I just wanna say like, I was an undergrad researcher for two and a half years. I've been a grad student now for a year. I've trained undergrads as an undergrad and as a PhD student, I've had my own undergrads. And so I do have some um, ground to stand on making this video and I've also talked with a lot of grad students who have had undergrads more frequently and more for longer periods of time than I have and these are all very similar things that we've talked about so anyway thank you so much for watching I have a whole playlist about like grad school and research and stuff like that so check that out if you have a desire to see more of my face talking about stuff like this <laughs> and I'll catch you in the next one thanks for watching bye